from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Stuart Granger and Gene Simmons in Adam and Evelyn. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Rehearsing tonight's play with Stuart Granger and Gene Simmons took me back through many years of memories. I was a young actor and had just met one of the loveliest actresses of the theater. Her name was Ruth Sinclair then, but for the past 35 years, it's been Mrs. Irving Cummings. I wish Mr. and Mrs. Stuart Granger many years of happiness and stardom together, such as they achieve in tonight's play, Adam and Evelyn. It's a J. Arthur Rank production released by the Universal International Studios. Now, Adam and Evelyn, starring Stuart Granger as Adam and Gene Simmons as Evelyn. In London, when wealthy ladies and gentlemen are in the mood to gamble, sooner or later they visit Adam Black's apartment. There, a small but carefully screened clientele are permitted to lose their money and occasionally win a little in an atmosphere quite as proper and elegant as their own homes. It's late at night. The gambling's over. And Adam has a handsome gift for a handsome woman. Good to you, Maura, for bringing the Boravinos. A hundred pounds. Well, thank you. But they won, didn't they? Enough to bring them back. You might phone them tomorrow. There'll be another game session... Thursday night. Oh, then you want Molly and Frank here, won't you? Oh, by all means. Tell them, will you, dear? Oh, I... I bought another horse today, Maura. How much? Six thousand. Ah, you're mad. Before I'm through, I'll have one of the best bloodstock farms in Ireland. Hey, what about Chris Kirby? He's waiting to see you. Hello, Colonel. Hello, Maura. Why, you old horse blanket. Well, come in here. Have a drink, Chris? Not a drop, thanks. Right here tomorrow. Uh, it's what I've come to see you about, Colonel. Uh, would you mind, Maura? Oh, not at all. I hope you win, Chris. Well, thanks. Maybe I will. What's the big secret? Well, Colonel, I'm riding Peveril tomorrow. Three miles people chase. A favorite, huh? But it's my belief that Peveril won't win. Now, there's another horse, Colonel. Abbott's Moon. He'd pay a real nice prize, six or seven to one. What about the others? <laughs> Out for a breath of fresh air. Why, a sort of mutual agreement, and you know? And you're on Peveril, hmm? I wouldn't be surprised if that noble beast was to fall at the last thing. Oh, no, that's out, Chris. You could break your neck. Oh, I've been falling off horses all my life. I fall, and Abbott's Moon wins. Oh, all right, but be careful. I'll put an extra 200 on Abbott's Moon for you. Thank you, Colonel. If you're not dreaming all this, we'll be a jump nearer to that farm of ours in Ireland. Oh, uh, by the way, there wouldn't be a spare bedroom on that farm, would there, Colonel? What on earth for? Well, it's a long story. You see, Will I... Will keep till tomorrow? Oh, sure, sure, well, then Colonel. you tell me after the race. And don't take any crazy chances. I've got sort of used to having you around. Don't you worry, Colonel. I can fall off a horse and land as light as a snowflake. Now, just remember, you're not as young as you used to be. Now, go on, get home, get some sleep. And now approaching the last jump, it's Peveril in the lead by six lengths. It's Peveril, Abbott's Moon and Damascus. It's Peveril and... Peveril has unseated his rider. Peveril has refused the jump and unseated his rider. It's Abbott's Moon by three lengths and Damascus. Abbott's Moon and Damascus. Well, Adam... Like Chris said, huh? I don't like it, Bill. He's just lying there. He's not moving. Well, maybe he's just. Well, you wait here. I gotta see what's happening. That, is that you, Colonel? I, I just spoke to the doctor, Chris. You're gonna be all right. Oh, I didn't fall as light as a snowflake after all. There's, there's something I, I got to tell you, Colonel. Not now, Chris. Save it. No, no, I. I've got a girl. She's in a home for, for orphans. That's why I asked you. At the spare room at the farm. A girl? Yes, yes. My daughter. She was counting on me, see? Now, don't worry, Chris. I'll see to her. Uh, Evelyn Wallace was her mother's name. Evelyn Wallace? Uh, we'll be all. Sidmonton. I'll look after her, I promise you. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, there's, there's something else. I used your name when I, I wrote to her, see? Your name, uh... I, I shouldn't have... She thinks it... You are... You are... Chris. Uh, Chris. Doctor! Please sit down, Mr. Black. 
by Mrs. Park for the matron. You asked for Evelyn Wallace. Yes, 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 I did. You're her father, Mr. Black? Her father? <laughs> no, of course not. But um, he was a great friend of mine. Was? He died two days ago. That's oh. why I'm here. Died? Oh, oh, dear, I'm extremely sorry to hear that. Poor child, she'll be heartbroken. Had she never seen him, Mrs. Parker? Never. It's odd that his name should have been Black, too. But it wasn't. It was Kirby. Chris Kirby. And I, I don't understand. You see, several months ago, Evelyn received a letter from a man who wrote that he was her father. He gave the name Black. Apparently, he just found out where she was. Perhaps he told you about... Tell me next to nothing. After that, he wrote her every week. They were extremely optimistic letters. Yes, they would have been. Chris was a great optimist. All about a farm he was going to buy in Ireland. And horses and how she was to be ready to leave here at a moment's notice. Evelyn's been building a whole new world around those letters, Mr. Black. He was trying to tell me something when he died. Something about her. Uh, where is the child? Now, I mean. She's probably helping in the kitchen. She's older than the other children. You know... We are very fond of Evelyn. I just don't know what she'll do when she finds this out. Well, I'd better be getting back to London. Oh, won't you see her? Just for a moment. Well, I'd much rather not. I'm, I'm no good at that sort of thing. I'm sure she'd like to see her father's best friend. You really think so? Well, all right. For a moment. Wait here, please. I'll send her right in. <laughs> Daddy? Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid there's been... Hey, now, now look, look it, it, it's all right. There's no need to cry. I knew you'd come for me. Every night I prayed and prayed. You won't ever leave me again, will you? Now, just a moment. I... You're exactly like your photograph. Photograph? The one you sent me. Don't you remember? Oh, yes, 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 that one. They wouldn't believe that you really existed. They said I just made you up. Oh, I'm so happy I could die. I'll go and pack my things. I'll be ready in hey, a minute. No, no, no. Wait a minute. There's been a slight misunderstanding. Well, you have come to take me home, haven't you? Oh, well, I, I think that, first of all, you should know that, that I am... You want to come home? Oh, yes. I haven't been able to think of anything else. You aren't disappointed in me, are you? No, no, of course not. Only it, it's rather difficult, you see. I, I'm... All right, Evelyn. You're coming home. Come pack your things. Well, this is it, Evelyn. This is where I live. It's very posh, isn't it? <laughs> well, I do a lot of business here. I have to impress the, the customers. Oh, hello, Bill. Hello. Hello. This is... This is Evelyn. Evelyn, this is Bill Murray, my keeper. He's also my doctor, lawyer, and my maiden aunt. <laughs> he lives here, too. My father's very funny, isn't he? Yes, yes. Father? You heard what she said. Well, I, I, I wasn't quite sure. Her room's all ready, of course. Well, no, I, I wasn't sure you'd be uh, bringing her back with you. Well, naturally, I brought her back. Why shouldn't I? He's not very bright. I beg your pardon, sir. You... You said something you were going to uh, visit Miss Evelyn, but no mention that she'd be... Uh... See what I mean? Memory like a soap. Just give her the room facing the park. Uh, yes. Very well, I'll... Um... Well, thanks. This way, Miss Evelyn. Well, where is she? What do you do with her? Uh, she's in there. She's unpacking. Thanks. Well, maybe now you'll tell me what's going on. She thinks I'm her father. Me. What gave her that idea? Chris wrote the kid a lot of letters and signed my name to them. He sent her my picture and said it was his. Don't ask me why. Any minute now, she's going to call me Daddy again, and I'll start crawling up the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know it's fun to see me in a spot, but it's not very amusing for her, is it? No, I suppose not. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. You are. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, what are you afraid of? I don't know what to say to anybody under 25. They terrify me. They paralyze me into a coma. Now, you could do it with your eyes closed. You've got such tact. Such charm, such, uh, uh, what do you call it? Savoir faire. Yeah. Oh, I know I'm adorable. <laughs> but I'm not going to do it. Bill, now, after all, I'm not asking much, am I? All right, all right, I'll tell her. Tomorrow. Now. Now. 
I'm glad you came back, Mr. Murray. It's this room. You mean all this furniture and things? They're just for one person? Oh, uh, yes, miss. One person. Uh, uh, I've been told to come in here to um, uh, help you unpack. Oh, I'm so happy. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, you, uh, you didn't have a room of your own where you were, miss? Oh, I'd never had anything of my own until I found my father. When I read his first letter, I laughed and cried at the same time. Mrs. Parker, she's the matron. She had to slap my face to make me stop. Nobody believed that he would ever really come and fetch me, but I knew he would. Oh, isn't it wonderful, Mr. Murray? Uh, Miss, Miss Evelyn. Yes, Mr. Murray? Uh, no, not, not Mr. Murray, just Murray. Uh, anyway, I, I've got to tell you something that uh, that he should have... Uh, well, that somebody should have... Uh, yes, Murray? Well, well, not Murray. Call me Bill, see. Bill? Well, uh, I, I just have to tell you... Yes, Bill? Well, how happy I am that you're united with your father at last. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, that's that. Bill, what do I call him? What would he like? Adam. Just Adam. Adam? Oh, what a beautiful name. Yes, but whatever you do, don't call him Daddy. <laughs> he hates any kind of fuss. Well, now, uh, what do you want me to do with your um, um, uh, clothes? Well, I I'm afraid they're all rather creased. Oh, dear. Oh, don't even think about them, miss. You'll be wearing... You won't be wearing these horrible things again. We've got to find you the kind of clothes that other girls have. I'll be back in a minute, Miss Evelyn. Well? Oh, well, how did you take it? Upset? Hmm? Tears? No, not a bit. Happy as a lark. Well, I'm a bit down. But she... Eh, hey, I don't believe you've told her at all. No, I haven't. And what's more, I'm not going to. Well, of to. all the soft, weak need, sentimental... All right, I'll tell her myself. Now? Why not? Well, it's likely to be a scene, you know. Well, there'll be a scene. We're not entertaining any customers tonight. No, we're not. And by morning, she'll be all over it. Exactly. So I'll just go in there and... and I'll tell her tomorrow. <laughs> brought your breakfast. Breakfast? What time is it? It's almost seven o'clock. Bill said you always, li always liked your breakfast early. Almost seven o'clock? In the morning? Oh, no. Shall I pour your coffee? Oh, I think I'd better say seven o'clock in the morning. Oh. Bill said you were usually depressed in the morning. He sent you in to cheer me up. Huh? Yes. May I stay here and talk? Sure, go ahead. What a pity we were kept apart for so long. If only you hadn't had to spend all that time in that horrible Jap camp. How did you know about the Jap camp? You told me in your first letter. Don't you remember? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what else did I tell you in those letters? Oh, about the time you nearly escaped. You and those two other men. Was one of them Bill? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Do you still have those letters? Well, of course I have. I have them right here. Oh, would you mind if I looked at them sometime? Well, there are 20 of them altogether, Adam, and one postcard from Bournemouth. Oh, Handwriting's a bit shaky, isn't it? Must have had a hangover when I wrote this one. What's a hangover? Well, uh, it's when your stomach strikes back for what you did to it the night before. Uh, about, about Miss Evelyn's clothes, sir. Well? Bill thinks I should have some new ones, well, Adam. Take her out and buy her some. Well, I, I'm afraid I'm not very good at this, sir. I had so little experience. Well, now's your chance to get some. <clears throat> well, it's no good, sir. It's too late. Oh, don't be so melodramatic. Well, perhaps if I went by myself? Well, you've never been in London. Well, I'd get lost, I know, but I could... I should be delighted to take you, Miss Evelyn, but really my taste is appalling. In addition, I'm colorblind. Now, whereas your father here has the most exquisite taste. Oh, I know, I know. He also has such charm, such tact, such savoir-faire. Mr. Murray. <laughs> Sir? You will take Miss Evelyn out this afternoon and do whatever shopping is necessary. Whatever is necessary? Uh, you won't be available, sir, is that it? That is it. Anything you say, sir? Now, uh, no, no, wait a minute. Oh, yes, sir. I'll take her. But you just said... I've changed my mind. Oh, Adam... Really, sir? If you'd rather that I... I will take Miss Evelyn shopping myself. Yes, sir. That's what I thought you said, sir. Oh, we had so much fun 
thing, Bill. You should have been there. You should have phoned me, Adam. I'd have joined you. Just get me a drink. After we bought my beautiful new wardrobe, we watched the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. You did? And then we took a ride on a bus. I've never been on a bus, you know. And then Adam took me to the Tower of London. You and... have had a day, haven't you, sir? Shut up. Oh, and best of all, we went to the monument. And guess what? We climbed every step clear to the top. I say, that must have been And then at the top, the wind blew off my berry, and it floated away over half of London. And then Adam bought me a new hat, two new hats, and then we came home. Adam, you're not really tired, are you? Tired? Me? Oh, I've never felt better in my life. Oh, it's such fun going out with you. What are we going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow? And the next day and the day after that? Bill. Sir? Where's that drink? Yes, sir. A drink? Why? Because I'm thirsty. Oh, there must be at least 500 things I want to see. Is that all? Well, there's Westminster Abbey, the British Museum, and the... Oh. Oh, Adam, ah. you are tired. I'm exhausted. Why? Because I'm very, very old. I always forget you look so young. Why do you look so young? I had my face lifted. Have you really? Oh, Evelyn, you must get out of the habit of taking everything I say as a literal truth. That was meant to be a joke. Oh, Oh, I see. I found it rather amusing. <laughs> oh, your drink, sir. Thanks. And I think this belongs to you, Miss Evelyn. I found it in the hall. Oh, my rabbit's foot. Thank you so much. Matron gave it to me for Christmas. I wear it around my neck. See, Adam, it's a rabbit's foot. Trapped on the premises, no doubt. Oh, no, it was... It was... <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but uh, don't you think that your um, uh, daughter ought to have something nicer? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Now, now, what about that thing magic that Mrs. Bradley left? Now, so... oddly enough, it's just what I had in mind. Uh, here you are, sir. Well, do you like it? It's, uh, it's a kind of... Uh... A family heirloom, mm. sir. Oh, Adam, it's lovely. A brooch, a pearl brooch. Oh, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Well, you can borrow it for a while, then. What? Well, of course, I should only wear it to parties. What makes you think you're going to have any? Hmm? I shall pretend. Adam, I... Oh, thank you. Oh. What a charming little scene. Oh, uh, Maura. Why, hello. The loving daughter and her doting daddy. Well, come in, won't you? Evelyn, this is Miss Hannon. Miss Hannon is a great friend of mine. I've heard a lot about you, Evelyn. Have you? Look, isn't this beautiful? Yes, it is, very. Adam's just lent it to me. But well, don't you think you'd better put it away somewhere? It must be very valuable. Oh, yes, I will. Excuse me. The brooch Mrs. Bradley gave you when she couldn't pay off? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Would you like me to give her the earrings to complete the set? Well, earrings are a little elderly, but thanks just the same. I suppose she's got a full-scale crop on you by now. No, of course not. Why should she? Why, indeed. You haven't told her yet, have you? Uh, no. You're crazy. Well, she's just a child. I'm not used to children. They, they, they get hurt so easily. There are ways, you know. I suppose you want me to do it. Well, you'd know the way her mind works better than I would. Well, it's sometimes since I was 16, but I'll try. She's in her room. Oh, uh, Moira, do it, you know, gently. Kid gloves. Evelyn. Oh, Evelyn, dear, I want to talk to you. Yes, Miss Hannon? There's something you must be told, Evelyn, about your father. You see, there's been a bit of a mix-up. Have you ever heard of Chris Kirby? Oh, yes, Miss Hannon. Chris Kirby was your father. But Adam's my father. No, dear. He just pretended to be. He's not my father? No. It was Chris who wrote all those letters to you. Oh, it was just like Chris to drift into something and then not know how to drift out of it again. Well, anyway, Adam thought the world of him, and he'll always look after you, so don't worry about that. But he's not my father. Why didn't Adam tell me? Oh, he should have, of course. Men are the most ghastly moral cowards, dear. Now, come and show him how well you've taken it. Come on, Evelyn. No, I... I can't. Later, please. All right, dear. Later, then, if you prefer. <laughs> May I come in? Oh, Evelyn, please, you, you mustn't. You'll make yourself ill. I can't help it. It's true, isn't it? I just haven't anybody of my own. Oh, well, of course you have. You've got me and Bill and everything's just the same. No, I'll have to go back to the orphanage. I know I will. Now, you listen to me. Don't you say things like that. You're Chris's girl and I'm going to take his place. You belong here. Oh, but the things he wrote in his letters about the other men gambling, that was really him, wasn't it? Yes, I suppose it was. Oh, now, please, Evelyn, please. It's going to be all right. Look, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go out and buy things. 
Anything you want. It'll be fun. We'll go to all the shops in London and... Uh, here. Here's a handkerchief. Blow your nose. It looks terrible. What does? Your nose. It's as red as a plum. We'll have to put some powder on it. But I don't have any powder. Well, then we'll get some. Buckets of it. Meantime, you and I have got to have a talk about your future. My future? Yes. Oh, you're going to have a wonderful time. It's the first place you've got to go to school, of course, in the most elegant school we can find. France, perhaps, or, or Switzerland. Is that what you want, Adam? Well, yes. It's what I want because I think it's best for you. Then I'll go. I'll go wherever you want me to go. With big, fat tears rolling down your cheeks? <laughs> oh, Adam, I just don't know what to do. And leave it to me. You're my girl now, and I'll be so proud of you, I'll bust. I'll try. I will. Honestly. And just one more thing. Yes, Adam? That nose again. Blow. <laughs> We'll continue shortly with Act Two of Adam and Evelyn. Make a friend, and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. In 1864, Clara Barton gave up a successful job in the patent office in Washington and devoted the rest of her life to bringing physical and mental aid to the wounded and dying on the battlefield. At first, it was the soldiers of the American Civil War. But when the war ended, she was forced to go abroad to recuperate from nervous exhaustion. While she was in Switzerland, Napoleon declared war on Prussia. Clara Barton was urged to return to her own country, but she refused. She felt it was her duty to remain in Europe and help the wounded of this new war. It didn't make any difference to her if they were French or Prussian. She didn't ask the nationality of the sufferer when she stopped the flow of blood from a soldier's wound. In spite of many inconveniences and hardships, she traveled across the rugged German countryside to reach the Prussian front lines. But there she was told that the only way she could be allowed into a front-line camp would be as a prisoner of war. Clara Barton agreed, and as a prisoner until the end of the war, she continued to do her work with the wounded Prussian soldiers. After the war, she remained in Europe to help the defeated French. When she sailed for home in 1873... Grateful Europeans bestowed on her many medals of honor, including the Gold Cross of Remembrance, the Jewel of the Red Cross, and the Iron Cross of Merit. Once again, an unselfish American had discovered that by helping others, you help your country. Now, our producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Act Two of Adam and Evelyn, starring Stuart Granger as Adam and Gene Simmons as Evelyn. <laughs> Over two years have gone by since Adam Black, professional gambler, became a father by proxy. Evelyn has spent most of those years in a finishing school in Switzerland. The changes wrought have been considerable, but now suddenly, Evelyn decided to return. Oh, you're angry with me, Adam, but it's so good to see you again. Angry? Why should I be angry? Why didn't you tell me I'd have met you? Well, I wanted it to be a surprise. Well, it certainly is a surprise. You should have sent a description of yourself in advance. Have I really altered so much? Well, a little. You're a very lovely young lady, young lady. Whatever I am, you've done it all for me. Oh, no. No, I'm not going to take the blame for all this. I sent you away to get rid of you. Am I here to stay? Please? Well, yes, I suppose so. I can't sit down. Oh, Adam, I'm so glad to be home. I'm so glad to be with you again. I should never admit this, but... Oh, my. Good morning. Uh, oh, oh, good morning, Bill. You look horrible, if I may say so. Well, you're entitled to your opinion. I feel marvelous. And if that's my breakfast... This is put... Miss Evelyn's tray. Well, where's mine? Or do I take second place around here from now on? And what is this? That is a rose, sir, slightly spattered with dew. Give me that tray. I'm warning you, sir, if On you your way, a... my good man. I'll bring it into Evelyn myself. Oh, Adam, how sweet of you. Yes. Oh, um, the rose was Bill's idea, not mine. It's beautiful. 
Oh, don't go. Stay and talk to me. What about? Oh, anything. You? Are you going to be busy today? Yes, fairly. You must work terribly hard. Everything about you is so expensive. Your car, this apartment, everything. You must be disgustingly rich. I get by. On the continent, they think we're all crippled with income tax. Well, so we are, if your income is taxable. Well, isn't yours? Some of it. You know, I've never been very clear about what you do. <laughs> I used to tell the girls that you're a financier. Well, that's near enough. I, uh, I gamble. Adam, you don't. Doesn't the idea appeal to you? Well, of course it doesn't. Adam, you're, you're just joking, aren't you? Yes, yes, of course I am. I, I, uh, I mean, I gamble on the stock exchange. Well, don't you ever joke like that again, not ever. No, I promise. Uh, tell me something. Why are you so upset about gambling? Why? But you should know why, you of all people. My father was a gambler, and if, if he'd been anything else, he'd still be alive, and... He... Oh, I'm sorry. It was thoughtless of me to ask you. Now, may I ask a question? Adam... Am I what you wanted me to be? Oh, you do. I wish you'd let me tell you how I really feel about all you've done for me. There wasn't a day when I didn't realize it, and I'm going to work. I shall find some very useful and important work to justify myself. I'll find a floor for you to scrub. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I've learned a lot. I can speak French, and I came first in biology. I always and wanted to meet a girl who came first in biology. <laughs> I can see I've got to do some phoning. What for? You. You've got to meet people your own age. But why? To get you off my hands. That's all you ever think about. Yes, it's quite enough. We'll arrange a party for tonight. Well, just for tonight. But you mustn't think you've got to entertain me. Go on now. Eat your breakfast. Well, well, well. This is amazing, Adam. Really amazing. Imagine finding you here. You and Moira and all those sweet young things. Tell me, are you and Moira married yet? Look, Roddy, why don't you... And I've been yourself. waiting to meet the glamorous new addition to your household. Well, Adam? <laughs> Observe his wild rush to introduce me. I'm sorry. Evelyn, this is Roddy, my brother. I don't suppose you knew he had a brother, did you? No, I didn't. Well, I'm the problem, child. The skeleton in the family cupboard. But I don't bear any grudge. When I saw Adam here, the bonds of brotherhood just dragged me over in spite of myself. I'll get the check, Evelyn, and I think we'd better go. Oh, count. no, no, you don't. You're not running off until I've danced with her. Do you mind, Adam? No, of course not. Oh, uh, tell me, Evelyn. Uh, how well do you know Adam? Very well indeed. He's been wonderfully kind for me. That wouldn't be hard. And, uh... You approve of him, eh? Yes, of course. And his profession? Yes. You do know what he does, don't you? He's on the stock exchange. The, the stock exchange? Well? <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. And what do you do? Well, nothing really, nothing at all. Oh, dear. Seems we've been dancing without music. If you're ready, Evelyn. Oh, Adam, tell me, how's the stock market? Never better. Well, Why? Evelyn and I were just chatting about it. Well, I uh, I must get back to my friends. We'll meet again, Evelyn. Night, Maura. Oh, Adam, must we leave? Well, no, not if you don't want to. Look, you and David and Sylvia and the others hang around if you like, but Moira's a little tired. Oh, Dave, darling. I think Adam had better take me home. Just don't be out too late. I'll have a word with David, Moira, and I'll meet you at the door. Well, for goodness sake, how sweet of you to wait up for me. I wasn't. I was reading. Oh. Anyway, I'm sorry. What for? For being so late and having too much champagne and keeping you up. You didn't. The book did. Oh. David see you home all right? No. Your brother did. He joined us after you and Moira left. And then we went on to the Silver Slipper. We? Roddy and I. We sort of lost the others. Now sit down, Evelyn. I want to talk to you. Oh, I love talking at this time of night. May I have a drink? You can have some water. That's all I wanted. Oh. Well, there's a picture on the bar. Did you enjoy your evening? Very much. I wish you hadn't left so soon. Well, you're old enough to take care of yourself, uh, aren't you? I don't know. Am I? Well, uh, uh, that's really what I wanted to speak to you about. You see, I, I don't want to cramp your style in any way, but I am responsible for you until 
Until what? Well, until you fall in love and marry someone. Uh, until then, I have to more or less keep my eye on the sort of company you keep. Oh, but Adam, I would always tell you everything. Yes, well, that won't be entirely necessary. What I really mean is... Oh. How much champagne have you had? Two glasses and a bit. Are you used to champagne? <laughs> no. I've never had it before. I love it. It gives you a wonderful warm glow. Oh, it does, does it? Mmm. Well, champagne is also inclined to make men affectionate. Oh, I've noticed that. Yes. <laughs> but the point is that there are a great many men in London who become affectionate without any champagne. Who well, also in Switzerland and in the south of France. They call them wolves. Our headmistress used to tell us about them. Oh, so you uh, know. Mm. Mm. Uh, well, I have a feeling I've been slightly pompous for the last two minutes. No, you've been very sweet, Adam, and I appreciate it. <laughs> and I'd appreciate it if, in the future, you told me when the headmistress had batted first. Uh, will that be all? <laughs> Just you go to bed. <clears throat> Good night, Adam. No, 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 no. Wait, wait a minute. Yes? I, um, I'm going to Ireland tomorrow. I'll be gone most of the week. Well, I'll go along with Oh, you. no, you won't. Oh. No, I'll be very busy. The farm and the horses. And, well, may, maybe on my next trip. Thank you. Oh, dear, you know, it would have been much, much easier if Chris Kirby had had a boy instead of a girl. You mean people are beginning to talk about my living here? How did you know? Oh, I just thought they might. I'm really quite grown up, you know. Yes, yeah, that's the general idea. Does Moira mind? Moira? No. no. Moira hasn't even mentioned it. I'm glad. Adam? Hmm? Have you always worn a moustache? Uh, no. Well, not always. Why? Oh, well, nothing. I was just thinking. Hmm. And I don't care what they say, Adam. Yes, but I do. Very much. Are you trying to tell me that I've got to go away? Well, we'd better start thinking about it, anyway. we? Evelyn, remember Moira's friend Molly? Mm-hmm. She's very nice. I like her. Well, she has a very comfortable apartment. She'd love to have you, I know. Of course, if you'd rather dig in by yourself. Molly's place would be fine, Adam. Good night again, and... I knew it was too wonderful to last. Yes, that's you. <clears throat> Welcome home, Adam. How are you? Oh, tired. Plane was late. How's the farm? Wonderful. The yearlings are really something. You ought to see them. Mm, they probably only kick me. Horses usually do. Well, we've got a big game inside. A couple of Americans, Mr. and Mrs. Blair. Need any help? No, not yet. Between Moira, Molly, and Frank, we're holding our own. Hey, wait a minute. What? What have you done to yourself? You remind me of somebody else. Oh, I shaved my moustache. Oh, bad luck. It doesn't suit you. Oh, thanks. Anything else to report? I think they can't wait. Is, uh... Evelyn, all right? Oh, she's phoned a couple of times just to um, uh, chat with me. Well, lay out my clothes, will you, and tell them I'll be in in a minute. Hello, you two. Hello, darling. Hi. How are you, Adam? Fine, thanks, Molly. We thought you were going to miss the game. Not a chance. What have you done to yourself? You look ill. I've shaved my moustache. Oh, pity. How's the chaperoning been going, Molly? So-so. I don't see much of Evelyn these days. Oh? Molly tells me she's out with your little brother most of the time. Now, come along, darling. You're needed in the game. Well, brother dear, come in. Hello, old boy. Did you get my letter this morning? I haven't looked right in. The mail's still there on the table. Oh, pity. I, I explained everything in the letter. Good news can always wait. Well, oddly enough, it is good news. Adam, I've got a chance of a partnership in a business. Really? What sort of a business? Export. It's with Charlie Espero. Espero? You know what sort of business he's in. Oh, well, I know it's a bit illegal, but who are you to talk? Espero wants me to put up 3,000 pounds. You mean he wants me to put it up? Uh, yes, that's roughly the idea. Well, the answer is no. Hey, tell me, why this sudden enthusiasm for work? That's something new for you, isn't it, Roddy? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm thinking of getting married. Really? Yes, to, uh, to Evelyn. And I thought that the 3,000 pounds might be by way of a little uh, marriage settlement. Uh, and it would set me up in business. Oh, I wish you had read that letter, Adam. It, it explained the whole idea. The idea is obvious. She's agreed to marry you. 
I'm meeting her for lunch, and I thought uh, I'd get this little business settled before I asked her. Yes, I bet you did. Make sure of the settlement first, then ask the girl. Oh, I'll ask her in any case. And I know what her answer will be. Because, you see, we become rather good friends, you know. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Just what I said. Get out. Oh, now, look here, Adam. Go on, get out. Well, I, I suppose you know what you're doing. Ta-ta, Adam. Bill? Coming. Get on the phone and find Evelyn. I've got to talk to her. Well, Adam, when are you going to tell me? Tell you what? Why you suddenly asked me out for dinner. There's a reason, isn't there? Well, I I wanted to ask you about Roddy. Oh, I thought that was it. You've been seeing quite a bit of him lately. Yes, I have. You like him? Oh, yes. Very much? He's great fun. Well, are you in love with him? No. You look very much relieved. I am. Would you mind if I were? Roddy told me this morning that he was going to ask you to marry him. Well, that's the first I've heard of it. You haven't much use for him, have you? I've known my brother for a long time. Aren't you being just a little unfair to him? Is that what he says? No, not exactly, but I think he feels that as far as you're concerned, he can't do anything right. That you just don't understand it. I understand Roddy too well. Well, after that, it'll plea for the defense. Shall we talk about something else? If you like. We could talk about your friends, Adam. About Moira, for instance. What about Moira? Oh, I just wondered how you felt about her. She's very much in love with you, isn't she? No, I don't think so. Well, Roddy, no. Roddy says she is. What the blazes does Roddy know about it? Well, Adam, all I ask... Well, let's get out of here. Wait up! Let's have a check. Well, you're home early, Adam. Laura. I just took a chance. I thought it would be nice to see you. Fortunately, Bill was here to let me in. Oh, have a drink? No, thanks. I, um, I hear you've ditched Roddy's plans for going in with a sparrow. He's quite upset, Adam. You've got to watch Roddy when he gets in one of his moods. I'm shaking in my shoes. Look, if you want me to go, darling, just say so. No, I'm glad you're here. I want to talk to you. I've got some news for you, Maura. For you and Bill and Molly and Frank and all our other loyal co-workers. I'm getting out of this racket. Tomorrow night's game will be the last. Oh, I'll pay you all off. Well, I must say you break the news with all of your usual grace and charm. I'm sorry. Why are you getting out? Scared? I'm bored. I'm bored of this kind of life and everything that's connected with it. Thanks. Oh, no, you know I didn't mean you. Oh, don't make me laugh. It's Evelyn, of course. Evelyn has nothing to do with it. And that's a lie. Good night, Adam. Shall I get a taxi for you? No, thanks. I've got a car waiting. I hope you won't regret this, Adam. to see you, Roddy. I thought you might be interested. Well, that's very decent of you, Maura. So, Adam is bored, is he? Bored to death with everything and everyone. I've got quite a confession to make. He means me, too. But uh, not our dear little orphan child, I suppose. She's at the bottom of the whole thing, of course. She still doesn't know what he does for a living? Not unless you've told her. Oh, no. I'll be keeping that from her till the last moment. I wonder if that right moment isn't here. Yes. Yes, it's time Adam was jolted out of that pipe dream he's living in. But, no, no, perhaps Evelyn isn't the right one to tell after all. No. No. I'm thinking of the police. Police? Oh, you wouldn't dare. Well, maybe not. But it's uh, something to think about. Isn't it, Moira? <laughs> In a few moments, we'll continue with the third act of Adam and Evelyn. We pause now for station identification. Curtain rises on Act Three of Adam and Evelyn, starring Stuart Granger as Adam and Gene Simmons as Evelyn. It's 
reached the following night. And in Adam's apartment, the gambling tables are once again in evidence. There's a large crowd of players, but only Moira and Bill know that this is Adam's finale. Now at the front door are a couple of unexpected visitors. Hello, Bill. How are you? I'm fine, Miss Evelyn. Is Adam expecting you? Well, I suppose so. He sent Roddy here to fetch me. He didn't tell me, miss. Why should he? Because I've had certain instructions, chum. But it's time she learned the facts of life. Well, what is this surprise, anyway? Oh, this way, darling. You know all about it. Bank is at 3,000. Bank is at... Eve. Hello, Adam. Come with me. Who brought you here? Your brother. Where is he? The other room. I preferred seeing you alone now that I've found out. I'll thank him later. Well, I suppose it's a bit late to try to explain. What's there to explain? I can see for myself. And you're horrified? Well, that's natural. But if you listen to me for a moment... Why did I'm... you lie about it? I had to. To spare my illusions, I suppose. Is that just a bad reason? You could have told me before I had any. How could I have told you when I found out you had this phobia against gambling? Well, because of that, you should have told me. You had any honesty in you. Instead of that, you built up a wall of secrecy. To protect you? To hide behind. Why did you go on letting me think you were someone else? Why did you tell me you were my father's best friend? I was. I loved you. How can I believe that? Or anything else you ever say again? First I lost my father, and now I shall lose you, all because you couldn't stop gambling. Oh, stop dramatizing I'm not dramatizing anything. I want to go away from here. I don't want to see you anymore. Very well. But you're not a kid anymore. You can't burst into tears because the world isn't your oyster. It's had to happen sometime, and I'm glad it's over. Now everybody knows where they are, and the world is just the same place it ever was. No, it isn't anymore. It's ugly. It wasn't ugly before. It was beautiful. Goodbye. You waiting for a taxi, too? I suppose I am. I'm not too sure. My name's Bradley. Didn't I just see you up in Adam's apartment? Did you? My luck was unusually bad tonight, so I decided to leave. Well, I'm afraid the taxi situation's hopeless. Can I uh, escort you anywhere? I don't quite know where I'm going. Well, I'm not too sure I know myself. Let's walk a little and make up our minds, hmm? It's a heaven-sent night. It was. Am I right in assuming you're Adam's ward? Yes. I thought so. I haven't seen you at the game. I didn't even know they existed until tonight. And the uh, discoveries shocked you, is that right? Yes. Now, let me tell you something. The best idols always have feet of clay. They'd be intolerable if they hadn't. And besides, you know, there's something rather human and endearing about feet of clay. All the women I ever loved had them. I wouldn't have loved them otherwise. Uh, may I offer a suggestion? Well? You're walking in the wrong direction. Now run along back. Good night, Miss. Where is he, Bill? Where's Roddy? Left, five minutes ago. And if you ask me, it's just as well. There'd have been a fight, you'd have knocked him down. Only I no. didn't ask you. No. no, that's right, you didn't. Now, if I'm not being too inquisitive, what's Moira doing over there at that window? There in the other room. I don't know. Been at that window a dozen times. Are you expecting any more visitors? Let's take a look. A car at the curb. Four gentlemen. Five gentlemen. Two coming in and three on the street. Excuse the expression, Adam, but those men are police. Come on. We've got just about two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen... I'm sorry, but there will probably be a police raid at any moment. Now, if you'll all keep perfectly calm, nothing will happen to you. Will you please come with me into the other room? Bill, you, Frank, Molly, Carter, get rid of everything just the way we've rehearsed it. Thanks, Mara, but I'd rather you stay close to me. This way, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Mara, do you know anything about this? I thought so. When the police arrive, are you going to give the game away? No. No, I don't think you will. Mrs. Salop, can you play the piano? Well, I do, stupid old dear. I haven't played for years. Now's your chance to practice. Oh, but really... Mrs. Salop, sit down, please, and start playing. 
Now we're all here enjoying a pleasant evening of music. there. You're doing beautifully, Mr. Salop. Don't stop. Mr. Black? Yes? Sorry to trouble you, sir, but I have a search warrant. Oh, suddenly leave the lights off that car? It's a little more serious than that, I'm afraid. Well, come in, come in. I hope there won't be any fuss. I have men at the other door, so don't try to... You know, what's going on here? Please, Mrs. Salop is playing. A few friends, music lovers, who meet occasionally for what may seem to you a rather old-fashioned evening... Uh, were you looking for something? I have reason to believe these premises are being used for illegal gambling. Really? I hadn't noticed. All the same, I don't think this little party is quite as innocent as it seems. Well, why don't you take your man and look around? That's exactly what I'm going to do, Mr. Oh, and, and quietly, if you please. Mrs. Salop is quite sensitive. You're coming with me. Whatever you say, sir. All right, Mr. Black. Who's the young lady? What? Oh. No. Oh, we've had a few more visitors since you left. This is... Uh, Inspector Collins, miss. Miss Kirby, Inspector Collins. Inspector Collins is a policeman. Policeman? Miss Kirby, didn't I see you leave this building a few minutes ago? Well, uh, yes, I suppose you did. May I ask why? Miss Kirby doesn't like music. It bores her. Quiet. When you left here, miss, is there anything else being played besides music? Well, I... Uh... Yes, there was. There was gambling. You'll swear to that? Yes, sir. You can stop now, Mrs. Salop. Thank you very much. Can I trust you to stay here for a few minutes, Mr. Black? I'll be here. You heard the madam cut out that nonsense. Why? I had to, Adam. Revenge? No. Always tell the truth and wash your hands before uh, tea, is no, that it? No, it isn't. Then why? Adam, what will they do to you? Will they send you to prison? Do you really want to know? They'll stand me up in a court and they'll say unpleasant things to me and then they'll find me. A lot? A lot. Not prison? Sorry to disappoint you, no. Oh, dear, then you'll start again. Please don't start again, Adam. I don't want you to. That's why I told them. It isn't right for you. It's wrong. You could do something else. What business is it of yours what I do? Well, none, I suppose. Except that I love you. Huh? Oh, don't, don't be silly. I'm not. It's true. You are being silly. You can't love me. Well, why not? Well, I'm 110 years older than you to begin with. You see this? Gray hair. Yes, you have, haven't you? Yeah, well, I haven't got as much as all that. <laughs> oh, what am I supposed to do? You could marry me, perhaps. Are you angry? Yes. I'm sorry. Do you hate me for sending you to prison? It was the You're only thing You're not sending I... me to prison. I just told you. Oh, how can you marry me? The whole thing's crazy. I'm all wrong for you. You you want someone, someone solid, not me. Well, say something. I've said it. I love you. Come in. Now, cut that out. Oh, sorry, Inspector. You'll have to come along, Mr. Black. Police station. Police station? Oh, just to book the charge, miss. Right away, Mr. Black, if you please. I won't be gone long, even. Oh, Adam, wait a minute. I forgot to tell you why I came back. Well, I thought you came back to send me to prison. Oh, but that wasn't really why I... Oh, I see. You came back to propose to me, huh? Oh, no, that was an afterthought. But I've been thinking about it for some time, and I've come to the conclusion that... that I really like you much better with your moustache. In a minute, our stars will return. If you go to Easton, Pennsylvania anytime soon, you might run into a fellow who is studying at Lafayette College. It wasn't too long ago that he was a kamikaze pilot. He was an enemy. Today, he's getting a free democratic education because of a boy by the name of Robert Johnstone. Johnstone died in the Philippines, but the kind of heart that he had will be evident for years. You see, he stated in his will that his $10,000 in government insurance was to be used to educate one of his former Japanese enemies in American ways. It was his last wish, and it's being carried out as he desired. 
Now, this took place in World War II, of course, but such acts by you and your friends, even today, are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are, coming forward for a well-deserved curtain call. Stuart Granger and Gene Simmons. And we're looking forward to the time when you'll be co-starring here in your first American picture together. Well, that'll be some time yet, Irving. We just started production on it at Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. Meanwhile, we're delighted to appear here together in Adam and Evelyn. And now George Sidney will direct you both in Young Bess, in which Jean plays Queen Elizabeth before she ever had hopes of being Queen of England. Yes, when the story opens, Henry VIII was still alive and had a son and a daughter who were also heirs to the throne. So when Elizabeth was young, like most girls, she fell in love with the most fascinating man of the court, Thomas Seymour. Which is naturally played by Stuart Granger. <laughs> naturally? <laughs> well, Seymour must have been fascinating, but he almost crossed Elizabeth the throne. It certainly was a time of intrigue and conspiracy and should make a great picture. Well, we hope so. Particularly as Charles Lawton will recreate his famous impersonation of Henry VIII. Tell us about next week's play now. We have chosen a romantic comedy from the 20th Century Fox Studio. It's a light-hearted story of the model and the marriage broker as our stars, and playing their original roles, we have glamorous Jean Crane. And a newcomer to our stage with a, with a unique talent for comedy, Thelma Ritter. You won't want to miss the humorous and romantic adventures of the model and the marriage broker. Well, we enjoyed that picture very much. Good night. Good night. Good night, and all our thanks. <laughs> this is Irving Cummings saying good night to you. From Hollywood. Heard in our cast tonight were Leo Britt as Bill, Yvonne Pate as Moira, Chester Stratton as Roddy, Norma Varden as Mrs. Parker, Herb Butterfield as Bradley, Bill Johnstone as Collins, Tim Graham as Chris, and June Jeffrey and Eddie Marr. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. Radio Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.